you ever had a user of your application or a client site that you're working on email you up or call you up and say, hey, the website is broken. I'm not able to download this thing. When I click an error, it's broken. And that's the most unhelpful information ever because you have no context as to how it works. And the classic thing that always happens is you try it out on your machine and it works just fine. So what Sentry does is it provides error tracking as well as some fantastic insights into what happened. It works for JavaScript as well as pretty much any language you can think of. But what we're really concerned here is the client side uh, error tracking. So this is what it is. And I'm going to bring you over to my Sentry dashboard. I've been running this on an application and I caused a couple things to uh, go ahead and error out. Now, Sentry is generally used for your production application. You configure it in your app and you let it run in production. And it's going to track all of the errors that actually happen on your user's console and send them back and give you great insights. So here I've got cannot read property map of undefined. If I click through to that, what it's going to give me is some really good insights and information as to what happened. So it tells me that this happened three times to one person uh, over the last 24 hours. It recently just spiked up. And over the last 30 days, we've never seen this before. And I find that really helpful because sometimes I'll see an error spike up uh, in here and I'll know, OK, that's a that's a recent thing that's happening to a lot of people or no, that's just an edge case that's happening to, to one person who may have uh, some issues with their browser. And then it gives us some information about what browser it happened on and what device it happened on. This saved me the other day where uh, I was getting uh, a bunch of errors from from users saying, hey, the downloads aren't working. And I really didn't know why it was happening. So I was able to go into Sentry and peer into the tags here. And I was able to say, oh, this download error is only happening on Safari on the iPad. And I was able to just whip out my iPad uh, reproduce the issue and get it fixed. Without that, I would have had to email them and, hey, uh, what iOS are you on? What browser are you using? And even if they they care enough to, to contact you, um, it tells you the level, the logger, what OS they're actually running. And then what's helpful is uh, the URL that they're using. So um, which person or sorry, which website are they on? Which URL are they on? This is happening on two different pages because I tried to uh, view the comments on two different ones. So that's really interesting. Now I can actually go to the stack trace here and you know that we are actually running bundle.js, which is just a, a minified version of our JavaScript, but it's able to download your source maps and uh, decompile them and show you uh, the stack trace as to where you actually authored it. So I can crack this open and I can see that we're trying to map on the post comments. And in one case, I was on this one right here, and there just was no actual comments on that one. So I'm trying to run map on something that doesn't exist. So I know that I can go back to my single here and say, or an empty array. And we already coded this ourselves. And that will make sure that if we call map on an empty array, it's not going to error out on us. Um, it gives you all the information that you would ever possibly want as to, to what's going on in here. I'm going to show you one more error, and then we'll get going uh, on our app. On our other one, this.props.comment is not a function. So if I go through to that, be able to see the same information as to what happened, when it happened, who it's happening to, what page is happening, as well as uh, a great stack trace. OK, I can see this.props.comment that they're saying that that's not. And then I can go back to my comments here and go, ah, it's not comment. It's add comment. That was my actual function name. I did it incorrectly. So let's look at how we would integrate this into our application. Then we'll go through some of the uh, handy features that Sentry makes available to us. What I like most about Sentry is that it's very passive. You don't have to do a lot of setup. You simply just integrate it into your app and it will do all of the work for you. I've got a config.js here and it will import Raven from Raven.js. That's the tool that they use to actually send the errors from your users' browsers to Sentry. And then you have your key in your app, which will I've popped into a string right here, which gives us our actual uh, Sentry endpoint. I've exported that because we're going to need it in our reduxagram.js. We also have a log function here, which I'm going to get into in just a second. So what you need to do to integrate Sentry into your app is go to your one point of entry, which for our example, it's reduxagram.js is sort of our, our main file here. And we're going to import Raven. And we also want to import that Sentry URL. Now we simply take the Raven and pass it the Sentry URL and call the install method on it. 
that's all you have to do to set it up. And now it's going to catch all of the errors that would normally happen in your user's console. It's going to send over that as well as all the information about where it happened and what happened with it. So I give that a save. And now we actually need to go ahead and write some bad code. So I'm just going to write it on page load, but obviously this would happen inside of your application on click or submit. I'm going to say console.log window dot does not exist dot nope and give that a save. And I'm going to let this refresh. We get the error. If you open up your console here, you'll see cannot read property nope of undefined. Now, if we go back to our Sentry dashboard here, you get the error. Cannot read property nope of undefined. You go on into it, you're going to see all the information uh, that we are used to seeing. Now, that is basically how it works. And if that's what you want to do, just get it set up and run it. Um, believe me, you, you're going to want this information collected because as soon as an error comes in, error report from a user, you're going to have some really good insights into use it. But let's take a look at some of the more advanced uses of Sentry, which is going to make your insights even better. So first of all, we want to take a look at custom tags. Now, uh, if we go into one of these errors right here, like cannot read property map of undefined, we've got these tags at the bottom, which tells us what browser device OS. But what if you had some additional information that you also wanted to group these errors by? Like for one example would be if I want to group all of my errors by a recent git commit, maybe I'm seeing a spike of errors. Um, we can tag it with a git commit and then see all the errors that are associated with that specific commit. Now, the way that we do that is we go to our config and pass it a settings object. We say tags. And you can come up with any of your own custom tags. So I'm going to say git commit is something. And I'm also going to say like user level is set to uh, editor. So maybe like this error is only specifically happening on a certain level of user because they don't have access to uh, some of the data. So I'm going to save that and uh, give ourselves another error here. Log window dot user dot does not exist. Just make another simple error here. I'm going to make that error happen. There's our error. Cannot read property does not exist of undefined. Go back to our dashboard. We see this type error it does not exist. It happened a few seconds ago. After about 10 to 20 seconds, your tags are going to start showing up in the Sentry dashboard. And you now see that the user level is 100% editor and also our git commit is in there. And that's interesting because I can click through to that and I can see all of the errors that are associated with this specific git commit or that specific user level. Another thing that we can do is create our own custom uh, exception. And that is exactly what this config function does here, where we log the exception and we can provide some additional context to it. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and I'm going to import the log exception. Now we can use that log exception function to log our own errors. You can also pass it a settings object right here, which will provide additional context. So if you have some information you want to bring along, maybe uh, the person's email address, that information is going to show up attached to that specific error. I should note here that I'm actually throwing the error myself here, but you may also put it in a try catch or maybe a catch from a promise. Uh, you get the point as to when you would log it right here. So I'm going to save that and give myself a new error. And get that error. Download failed. There it is. It's throwing. Now I go back to my application. Download failed is now showing up. Click through to it. And you'll see, look, additional data, email westboss at gmail.com. So if there's ever any valuable piece of information, what download were they trying to download, uh, any other piece of information that you want to come along with it, you can pass it along at an exception level in that object there. Now I want to show you how, what if you just want to log in a message and you don't need all the, the information about what happened in the stack trace, you can use the Raven capture message. Something bad happened. And that's great if you just need to capture some sort of message that happened. You don't necessarily need all the error information that comes along with it. Now I refresh this. We don't see the error here because the error didn't actually happen, but I can go back to my century dashboard and you'll see something bad happened. And I get all the information about what happened specifically there without the stack trace. Finally, what I want to show is the report dialog. So sometimes you do need a little bit of more information from the user, or sometimes the user wants to provide feedback as to 
what happened and what went wrong. Now, I've done this before where we have a provide feedback button and that generally pipes into like a bug tracking system. However, I found it really hard to connect the bug that the person submitted with the actual user session that the person was having. So what I prefer to use is the actual uh, Raven report dialog. Where after you capture a message or after you log an exception, you can call raven.showReportDialog. And that will pop open this really great feedback form. It says, look like we're having some internal issues. It'll allow me to fill it out. It'll allow me to give my email address and it will allow me to tell what's wrong. I'm gonna submit that crash report and go back to the back end of my dashboard here. And we can go to user feedback. And right away it shows up. I click the thing and it didn't work. I can see who did it, who submitted it. And I can click on that error. It's gonna show me the regular error that we're used to, but now the feedback for that specific error is now showing up, giving you even more context as to what happened. So that is Sentry, definitely worth signing up for a trial and running it on some of your apps. You may be surprised as to uh, sales or users that you're, you're losing because you have some edge case errors that are popping up on the client side.